Welcome back, and we have Tim Alexander. His website is uh, europebusinesswith1s.blogspot.com. And, uh, Tim, you're one of the top uh, geopolitical military analysts and equipment analysts of what's going on in the world. The current visit by the usurper-in-chief, and by the way, I thought it was quite humorous when I saw some of the blogs that stated that the person that was portraying Satan looked like a dead <laughs> ringer for the father of none other than Barack Obama. And, of course, his facial expressions while he's in Israel it was quite disturbing, uh, I guess, for those who worship Obama. Alex Jones for had, a, had a really went on and on about uh, the, the movie image, uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of a splitting image of Obama, but a very dark image. Uh, uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know he's clearly uh, Satan, and, and uh, Alex Jones makes the the point that uh, uh, he is not the Antichrist, but he is a Antichrist, because you know the Bible refers to that not only the Antichrist but many Antichrist. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would say that uh, he's anti enough. Let's put it that way. Yeah, he, well, he uh, makes uh, the Alex great. Jones says he's the the most. Uh, demonic uh, player on the world stage today. I, I disagree yeah. with that. I think Netanyahu actually beats him at that particular game, but uh, uh, and well, the two I, of I them are together, and uh, they seem to have but, kissed and made up, and uh, they're all uh, you know buddies, and oh, God, that's a bad sign. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, I, I, there's yeah. several things going on that don't seem necessarily connected, but they are. This Cyprus thing, um, you know, the Russian prime minister, former president, prime minister, now current prime, prime minister, uh, made the statement that uh, the Treasury will be unable to meet its financial obligations due to the Cyprus bank uh, freeze. The uh, Russia, including many of their payments, are sent through Cyprus banks. And, of course, there's... <laughs> how corrupt is a country when it makes its payments through an offshore bank uh, center. But anyway, uh, the KGB, ex-KGB mob, the people that really own Russia and really run things uh, to the tune of many, many, many billions each, they tend to use Cyprus almost exclusively. There are several reasons. It's easy to get to. It's warm. Uh, there's a tradition that goes back all the way to the time of the czars of Russians being involved there. Uh, Cyprus, the Greek part, is very uh, Eastern Orthodox, as uh, was uh, Russia traditionally, and it is again. And uh, there's this, you know, they, they, they go back many years in Cyprus. So... When all the IMF did this, they, uh, some people said, well, this was a mistake on their part, and uh, they overlooked the fact that the Russians are there. No, these people are not naive. These people know everything. Uh, this was a, a deliberate attempt to force the Russian uh, mob, and I'm not talking about the Chechen idiots. I'm talking about the real guys, the bad, bad ones. Uh, to take a 15% haircut. Now, the term 10% is usually used, but really the spread is from about uh, 5 to 6% at the low end to 99 .9, and then at the very high end for very large accounts is 15%. So when yeah, you're they were talking, talking for a while there, billions, about 30 you're talking they want 15% uh, off the top. You don't steal 15% off the top from the Russian mob and live to talk about it. Right. In fact, uh, uh, there's levels what I call they're stupid and there's monumentally suicidally stupid, and I think they've passed that mark. Well, but no, I don't think so. I think he, this, is what, this is why it's even scarier than that. That would be, uh, for people in a position of great power to do that, that would be like, wow, did they did not only take a stupid pill, they forgot and, and took the whole bottle one after another. Uh, no, no, it's worse than that. I think it's they don't care because they know something else is about to happen, and that something yeah. else is centered on the Middle East. It's the Iran and Syria thing. If you follow all the news on Syria and Iran, uh, we now, you've, we've had uh, a chemical warfare event 
which the both sides claim the other side did it. Now, I don't trust any government, and that includes uh, Assad's Syrian government, but as uh, an outsider, I have to say that if you look at, at their truthfulness uh, during the last two years of this war in Syria and the so-called uh, rebels, which are nothing but foreign-paid mercenaries, the foreign-paid mercenaries have been committing uh, one set of war crimes after another, and they lie consistently. And the Syrians have tried to, to in most cases, be truthful because there, it, it's, it's a strategic uh, uh, direction that they want to take. And uh, just from what I know uh, from, like, the, the Orthodox priest that was sent over there and, and talking to him and, and getting inside information, uh, the people, are, uh, by and large, support the Syrian government. They know that these are outsiders paid for by the Gulf Cooperatives, Council by Israel, by the United States and NATO. They know that their country is being invaded. But... Uh, you now have a situation where we're moving very close. We, we, uh, they use chemical warfare, but uh, the West is saying uh, Assad used chemical warfare. Uh, so we've already crossed that Rubicon, and that was supposedly the red line that if we ever got even close to, we would attack. Uh, a lot of people in the Senate are screaming that we need to do uh, uh, an attack against Syria. Uh, the Joint Chiefs have said that the, 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 the plan is there for pinpoint strikes. Everything is setting up. There's a progression and a psychop that's working and is getting the American people ready. Oh, we have to take them out. They're using chemical warheads. Ba ba ba. And when we cross that river, con, when we actually go to war directly uh, against Syria, sorry, Charlie, it's over. Uh, well, let, you, let, let's, 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 let's w- walk w- over. Three. Well, let's walk through the scenario. Uh, we have, let's say, um, I don't know the names of, let's say, the Russian submarines. Well, let's say we'll call one of them the Lunov. <laughs> Lunov submarine sitting 220 nautical miles off the coast of San Francisco decides they received a distress signal from the Russian uh, senior uh, director of nuclear forces is timed to do a preemptive launch on all American cities. Now, the new Triple M, that by the way, when it comes back in from space, has enough evasive technology, there's nothing that we have that can stop it from hitting its target. Nothing. Okay? Just like uh, I read a report today in the analysis from one of the military analysts looking at our aircraft carriers, our aircraft carriers, like when you're a kid and you're playing, you know, with your little boats in the tub, and then someone, your brother's... I always got got in trouble because I flooded the floor. (laughs) Right, and what would happen is you're going to sink your brother's boat. Well, the problem is our aircraft carriers is a technology that's beyond its time. And the reason is the asymmetric ways of taking these and either mobilizing them with EMP weapons, hitting with a high-speed cruise missile, or hitting with a concept percent of cruise missile under water, literally a cruise missile underwater called a torpedo, traveling at, you know, 400 and some miles an hour or so, you know, several yeah, hundred knots. Yeah, it pushes gas out the nose and flies through the gas bubble, literally. Right. And basically, and what this analyst said is the cost of putting an aircraft carrier in operation, which basically can be taken out of, of use very quickly, even if it doesn't go to the bottom, is stupid. And the fact is that we're in a situation well, as now of, where we're... Uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, I think we had five of them in the Norfolk uh, Naval Base. Now, what it is is muscle flexing, and it's used as a political way to say, hey, we have a presence here, we're doing this and that. It's a little different than if you have a high-velocity... You know, can go 12G. Well, 30 uh, years ago, I proposed that uh, there was a a family of uh, all composite VTO aircraft that I was uh, uh, consulting uh, with an aerospace firm on, and I proposed that we go back to escort carriers uh, and carry uh, a large number of these uh, for each aircraft carrier uh, to spread the target zone out. Right. That's what's really going on. That's why there's a kind of a hard endpoint as to why they're in a panic. Now we now. need to repeat what we, we kind of just said uh, yeah. for our viewers, I think. Yeah. 
Welcome back, and uh, let's repeat some of the thesis uh, for those who haven't heard this before. Um, I know that uh, I heard, and <laughs> you mentioned before, that Alex did uh, a big blurb on why Obama is one of the Antichrists. Well, there's lots <laughs> of Antichrists. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, the three major players at the end of the age, or aeon, that are prophesied, three major players, not one Antichrist, but three major ones. There's lots of little Antichrists, too. One of the big Antichrists is Obama, and it, or it will be a U.S. president. It will also be, if you actually look at the pedigree of what, the quote, this president will do, he's going to do three major things. The first thing is he's trying to destroy America, which he's doing a very fine job. Oh, yeah. He's not he's incompetent. He's got that down well. Right. The second thing he's going to do is he's going to destroy the economy and the dollar value, which is 90% of the world currency, very efficiently, so it'll turn to what's called ghost money. So eventually it'll be the backbone of the actual mark of the beast, uh, which is a virtual currency based on biometrics. And then they'll print as much virtual money as they want. And then the third thing he's going to do, basically, is he's going to work with the uh, re world religious authorities, and that's why, of course, he's over in Israel now, but he will work with the world religious authorities, probably this new pope, and the Russian leaders to bring about a dialectic of peace. Right now, his whole approach over the Middle East is, hey, you're not treating the Palestinians right, Jews, and, and you know, and try and, and you guys need to kind of make peace with the Jews, and you guys, if you all just get together, everything will be fine. The fact is, he yeah, it's the usual malarkey that they've been saying for years. But the bottom line is, he he and Netanyahu are are of one mind in in terms of uh, of recognizing that uh, their bitter. Uh, mortal enemy is Iran and Syria. Syria is the back door to Iran. And uh, the, the Iranians, the is, as we have talked many times before, uh, they've spent billions of dollars and over 20 years now using the technology that they basically bought uh, from, and I always mispronounce it, bio prepare pot, the, yeah. uh, the Soviet uh, Advanced Biological Warfare Program. And the Iranians hired a great many of their scientists when they, the scientists were literally without any income. Uh, no the Iranians horse, no went sausage. and offered no. five thousand yeah. dollars uh, per person per month, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They built up a heck of a program. That is a doomsday program in the way the Iranians have designed it. Uh, now they they do have biotoxins and a lot of other that things that aren't doomsday, but they essentially set up a doomsday program, and this was a checkmate uh, against the Western uh, uh, strategic nuclear forces. This was their way of saying, okay, you can uh, either Israel or the United States, NATO, etc., can absolutely flatten Iran from one end to the other in less than a half hour, and there will be nothing left, and there won't be enough people to bury the dead, and everything will be a green sea of radioactive glass. You can do that. But we can also, even though we may be dead, our bioterrorists will, will release multiple genetically engineered killer viruses that you have no protection against all over Europe, all over North America, and we will return the favor, and you all will be dead in, in roughly similar numbers to what you have inflicted on us. Now, that's a, that is a, a doomsday weapon system, and it is absolutely verifiable that Iran has this, and it is the equal of a global strategic nuclear weapon system, only they don't have ICBMs, they don't have long-range bombers, they don't have all the nukes, but they can still kill us in roughly the same percentage as if they did have you know, uh, ICBMs and, and SLBMs and so forth. Dead is still dead. Whether you are dead because of a big flash in the sky or because a sub-microscopic uh, uh, virus has, uh, has turned the inside of you into mush, dead is still dead. And, and we are going down a path in the Middle East that is so bizarre and is so evil that uh, it can only be described as a spiritual battle between the, force, the, the forces of the most evil uh, demonic uh, entity of all, Satan himself, and the forces of, of Holy God himself. And uh, you are totally right. There are, there are things happening on this planet 
that you cannot totally say, well, okay, this is because the, the British petroleum oil disaster uh, killed the loop current and, and it changed our climate uh, and, and uh, the sun's very active. There are things happening in terms of volcanic activity and a lot of other things that simply uh, are beyond that. And yeah. uh, certainly the asteroids that are hitting us uh, and uh, the expert you cite that, that talks of a red dwarf uh, sun that's pushing yeah, them in uh, yeah. to our orbit. Yeah. That, yeah, prof- there's something yeah, prof- like that. There, they, whether yeah, prof- I, I, I don't know his, his details well, that well, but something well, is yeah. happening. And yeah. the, the, the powers that be know that uh, the, 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 the rules, everything's about to change, and they plan on changing things rapidly themselves and when I say Cyprus is all connected to this it's what they're doing and not doing it's obvious they no longer care what the public says or thinks Uh, they are, are, are at their most arrogant why because they know that the general Middle Eastern war is about to start yeah, I, well, and that let me will go change back a couple everything. Steps, we will Tim. speak in terms of before Tim. the war, the war, and after the war. Those of yeah. us that survive it. Yeah. Tim, it here, let, me give it, let, me, let me explain the thesis and get your military analysis of it. Uh, I believe that if you step back a bit, that the globalists believe that there's an extinction level event coming. We know, for example, the Vatican has the whole uh, control of the Graham Observatory uh, and the uh, binocular telescope in Mount uh, Graham. Uh, from the University of Phoenix in Tucson, they have the uh, telescopes and other radio telescopes in South America, the Arecibo telescopes, the radio telescope. They're fully aware that what's going on is uh, we're heading toward an extinction level event. And what's what I believe is happening is the globalists are actually pushing to do a cataclysmic control or disaster now because they're going to use it or lose it, and, and they have to actually create some kind of financial and worldwide geopolitical and religious catastrophe so that they can maintain control because pretty soon if there's a big CME or some other event in the next few years they're not going to have control it goes back to basically the not the 19th century not even the stone age because our civilization if we don't have power we don't have an agrarian society it will be like Masada where people will decay within weeks to cannibalism it's going to be really crazy that's well, why one of the things I teach wars. is is when the the dark ages, when the the Roman legions pull back from from England, pull back from Europe, and when that happened, the dark ages and that in the dark ages were a creeping thing, and then Rome itself fell. So in the West, uh, Eastern Roman Empire continued for a thousand years, but in the West, when Rome fell, everything went to hell, and literally there aren't many very uh, many places there are no records, and uh, we that's why. We we refer to it as the Dark Ages, and people went from from being able to have heated bathhouses uh, in in their their properties, and being educated, and having a system of posts and transportation and roads and security, to not knowing when the next group was going to come over the hill to rape and plunder and kill them, and uh, there was no food, there was no no nothing, and everything went to hell in a hand wagon. But at least they they were prepared for that level of technology. Joining us, we have Chris Harris. Uh, during the last what is it, 12 days, has been a dance about the power outage. They get the power back on, but the power packs that they had were on the back of trucks covered with a tarp for the last two years, subject to the elements, subject to the degradation caused by radiation. No backup power systems or any redundancy. No real move toward uh, Kevlar spider silk tents, corium catcher underneath to catch the nuclear material, seawall. No system of removing radioisotopes from either the cooling pools or the isotopes that are sitting around other areas around the plant. The common f- cooling pool, by the way, is a major trigger to tell you that they were reprocessing spent fuel pool, um, fuel rod assemblies to make plutonium detonators for nuclear warheads. We have a situation where the hyper-aggressive uh, Japanese government now are so aggressive that if you, quote, try to report anything, even your opinion, on um, Fukushima Daiichi, you go to prison. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Um, 
what's the latest in terms of what happened here after this very scary dance? Because a pyrophoric fire, which is basically the material, once these fuel rod assemblies blow off all the water, a pyrophoric fire would be thousands of times more radiation than was already released in the last two years. We came dangerously close. I can hear the whizzing of the Fukushima radioactive bullets past our heads today. <laughs> and I don't believe that, by the way, this is any means over. They're not just running out of time. <clears throat> They're going to soon run out of technicians that even have any idea what even it consists of the plant before it got destroyed. It's a toxic waste site where the scrambled technology, the subsidence of the buildings, and the uh, the sheer mass of the problem, no one is is taking, it, as you say, uh, Chris, an adult approach to this problem. To, uh, tell us what's going on in Fukushima, because we literally could have had a radioactive contamination of the entire northern hemisphere that literally we just missed in the last 24 hours. Okay, well... The main systems that cooled the unit one, two, three, and four, and the common spent fuel pool. Actually, the common spent fuel pool was actually in good shape for some reason. It was not really subject to the inundation originally uh, back in March 11th. But what happened was the the original equipment for the spent fuel pools are pretty much uh, shot. They're gone, and they've been replaced with. Well, I keep on saying flimsy makeshift systems, and I said that over and over again until everyone was sick of hearing it. But this is exactly indicative of what I meant. And that is temporary power supplies that were not as robust as the as the originally installed equipment. As and, and really, the installed equipment really was robust. They couldn't take what what was you know dished out. The one-two punch was dished out by nature. But you certainly can't slap together something uh, hastily and expect it to uh, endure uh, the weather and all without any kind of problems like this. So what happened was uh, a a, uh, as you put it, a power pack, that's a good way of putting it, or some of your electrical guys will know out, out in the out in your audience, uh, a metal-clad switchgear, that, that's really what it is, sitting on the back of a truck with a tarp over it for close to two years with typhoons beating it up and there's animal infestation, as, as was... They, they call it a mouse that ate the wire. That is That sounds like a children's story, doesn't it? The mouse ate the wire. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some maybe some kind of mutated uh, <laughs> mouse that probably weighs about 12 pounds or so. But, but anyway. we can make a a new day it'd be, it'd be a new version of Godzilla only a mouse size. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> what what what, uh, what I've been kind of trying to you know uh, emphasize over the period of time was you can't duct tape them you know and uh, you know chicken wire stuff together and expect it to to perform its function. So what happened was three uh, before four cooling systems for the spent fuel pools failed uh, because they lost electrical power. Now here's now here's the kicker. They they had to we, they had to run new wire to the pumps themselves that were doing the cooling and where this location was where the switch gear that failed was pretty remote, was pretty far away from where the uh, actual power needed to be. So these guys had to run new wire. We're talking kilometers of electrical wire. Not cheap, not easy to do. They were never you just did house wire, you know, that stuff's got a mind of its own. So these guys had to go ahead and uh, bring new wire to bypass, and they called it bypass. I mean, it really is. It's like running a big extension cord, but it's very heavy wire, and it's uh, certainly um, not easy to install, and you have to put it in the area, bring it up and down stairs and all, and through radioactive fields and all kinds of stuff. So it wasn't uh, wasn't a pleasant test to be done. They did get it done, not not until the temperature did rise, and that meant they lost control of cooling, and as as we expected. So uh, I guess out of out of all of that, I would be most concerned. Hmm, boy, which one would I be most concerned about? I, I'm concerned about all of them, and then but this is the first time that the common spent fuel pool, the one that you were talking about before, where it could be an interim waiting period for the spent fuel to be cooled off long enough to be taken to some sort of reprocessing facility. Well, this is the first time it really lost long-term power, and it, too, the temperature did rise in there, too. So the entire, the entire facility of Fukushima is certainly not out of the woods. It's uh, in, it, and it needs, it, what it needs is uh, 
I, I guess it needs some engineering to reinforce what is there already. We're talking about, you know, tanks that were hastily erected that are leaking. Technicians go by. Uh, they, these tanks are not welded tanks. These are bolted together uh, prefabricated section of tanks with uh, a rubber uh, gasket material between the sections, and technicians routinely go by there with a big wrench, and they see something dripping out of it, and they just, oh, maybe they'll go tighten up on this on this bolt, but that needs to be done, and that kind of maintenance, but that that's not how those tanks going to last for uh, decades while any kind of a cleanup process is, is undergoing. Well, it can't. And um, I wouldn't want to be putting my hands near any of that stuff. I wouldn't want to be in the same uh, country, practically, as... Uh, uh, in, I, well, I, well, the I, problem I, is that those radioisotopes are just as hot when they arrive in Los Angeles or Indiana or in the Czech Republic as when they left the radioactive reactor, the underground uh, hydroventing of radioisotopes from the corium that could be many meters below ground. They're just as hot as when they left the reactor in Fukushima. People think, well, it traveled 5,000 or 10,000 miles. Surely it's not as radioactive. And I beg to differ. Those isotopes don't give a damn if they travel 10,000 miles. They're still as radioactive. They're still energetic. And, Tim, uh, I, I put you on the duty roster for next week. you got the wrench, and you're going to you're gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> not as long as I've got a gun. <laughs> There's not funny. enough men on this earth to drag me over there. <laughs> now, uh, now, when you went over to KEPCO, uh, Chris, you were over there consulting with the Korean. Uh, have you had any feedback since this happened in, on TEPCO as to what they can do with backup power and redundancy? Because... Let's go through the engineering defects that I can see as a non-engineer. Number one, they have no redundancy in their power systems. They had these power packs on the back of trucks where the elements, literally mice and rats, the vermin, <laughs> and radiation, which, by the way, can degrade microchips, wiring, and even the sheathing of the wires can cause uh, shorting. Uh, there was no backups or any redundancy. Number two, they never dealt with a corium catcher that was flexible to deal with hydrogen explosions. As I mentioned, the spider silk corium type, uh, you know, catching tent. There was no attempt to put a aquarium catcher underneath, no seawall. Basically, uh, they don't have any way of protecting the people working around there, so they're going to continuously expose people to too much radiation. And eventually what's going to happen is they're going to run out of workers. This situation in Tokyo is also, people don't understand, two years of slow cooking with radioisotopes is making a lot of people, even in the southern districts of Tokyo, Fairly radioactive. And I uh, say two more or three more years, five years of this radio radiation is going to make people, even if they think they're okay in Tokyo because the weather and the scenery looks the same, except the birds may not be chirping and they may find that insects look funky. <laughs> what, we're, what we're dealing with is a situation of gradual, slow radioactive uh, cooking of all the population there. And they don't understand this is the largest greater metropolitan area on Earth of any major city, 45 million total population. And they're all dying of very chronic radiation exposure. They just don't know it yet. To the Nutramedical Report. Um, I want to summarize here what uh, what happened. What recently happened was basically we just dodged a bullet, but it doesn't mean it's over. Um, if you were to summarize, and you did the experience, uh, Chris, uh, that, by the way, it's not your real name, it's your radio name. You're not a uh, journalist writing reports weekly. You're actually a safety nuclear expert with high levels of training, and you look at this and I'm sure your skin is crawling when you're realizing just how crazy and stupid this is. And I'm sure that the Koreans, who are very obsessive-compulsive, are probably freaking out now, realizing how damn close they are to Japan and the cyclonic currents that carry us across the South China Sea. Because within two weeks of the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown and Station Blackout, which, by the way, the, the earthquake broke the reactor, number one, because it was right on the fault line, 
long before the tsunami struck. And within 22 provinces within China, within one, two weeks, we're showing high levels of radioactivity. So it doesn't just go from west to east, these radiation clouds, which can cover not only the northern hemisphere, all the way through to the eastern bloc, which, by the way, January of 2012, to January 6th, they had a major earthquake that caused the release of plutonium they detected in Eastern Europe because everybody else is so corrupt they wouldn't report it. Uh, how bad is this, and where is this all going? Because what I think is three things can happen. Number one, just further structural breakdown. Number two, uh, incompetence to a level where they don't have backup systems so that when it does break down next, they are going to have a pyrophoric fire, which, by the way, you can't put out. And number three, they have an earthquake that happens at the OI reactors or back at Fukushima and, and or a tsunami on top of that, maybe even triggered along with a coronal mass ejection, which, by the way, triggers earthquakes and volcanoes and power blackouts. And at that point, you're going to get a massive, giant radiation release that will be orders of magnitude beyond what we already had the last two years from Japan, plus other reactors that were damaged, by the way, on the other side of Honshu, the Northern Island, there were other reactors that were damaged that people don't want to report about. The Japanese government basically jailed any journalists who made statements that were, quote, not, quote, approved by the state. People here in America don't realize there's no, there's no freedom of the press. The idea of freedom of the press is, ha, 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 you silly Americans. It's really ridiculous. Uh, so um, what people need to grasp is that the Japanese are doing an international crime. They need to be sued in the International Court of Justice in The Hague. There needs to be our so-called multinational corporations, including General Electric, and um, the major suppliers of these companies need to be sued internationally uh, for their crime against the entire population by venting radiation into the atmosphere and dumping millions and millions of tons of radiation, highly radioactive water, into the Pacific Ocean. So these are carried across in the Kuroshi Current to Alaska, to the Alaska waters, all the way down from British Columbia right through Washington, Oregon, to California, Baja, and circulate in giant cyclonic currents across the entire Pacific Ocean. And by the way, it takes 26 to 28 months for these radioactive waters to be carried to every ocean on Earth. So now that it's two years on, we have about two to four months, and these radioactive waters from Fukushima Daiichi will circulate in every ocean on Earth, North and Southern Hemisphere. They so, are, and, but, but in the Pacific, they're more concentrated, and really... You do not want to eat seafood from the Pacific, nor do you want to eat seafood from the Gulf of Mexico because of the oil and the correction. Exactly. And, and so, those so, are two very large areas, Pacific, particularly yeah. this, the northern Pacific Ocean. And to say that out of those enormous parts of the planet Earth, we shouldn't eat food because it's too damn dangerous. Right. Good exactly. Lord. Now, so, so uh, Chris, can you fill in um, where you see this going? Because... When I just look at it plainly, the situation is very dire. Well, what you've seen was the thin, fresh coat of paint wear off, revealing the uh, termite little timbers that lie beneath it with really no substance, you know, holding it up. So what, is it, what does it mean? It means that uh, even, even the brand-new nuclear regulatory agency that was just just formed several months ago to come in here and clean up this here mess. You know, they're, they're, they're going to come in on their white horses and, you know, and, and, and resolve this problem. You're talking about the Japanese agency here. Do. I don't see the IAE doing anything. I don't see Obama no. making any public statements on it. I don't see when I contacted uh, Senator Feinstein here from California, her so-called nuclear uh, specialist was like a high school well, kid that didn't that I, missed all the classes. And I'm not impressed at all with I got with Senator Hayden, who raised concerns at least temporarily about Fukushima, but then when I responded to him and sold, we need to get data, they don't respond at all. So we basically we have incompetent liars, people who want to politic about it, but they don't want to do anything of substance. Any operator knows the first thing they do when they come onto a new plant, and anytime, any, or if they're going to train a new operator in, is you learn the electrical system first. And you get that right. hammered down. That's the skeleton upon which all of the other uh, motors pump that drive pumps, that drive fans, that drive everything else. All of that was there. First thing you do is you learn that down. How come this, this the collective wit, and I guess I'm going to be kind of harsh on them, uh, the, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency didn't, didn't see this coming either because 
All right, maybe, maybe, maybe TEPCO and, the, and, and out there, they knew, they knew about it and they kept it quiet. But You're talking about the, the U.S. Guys, nuclear regulatory, because they went over there and did an analysis, but their analysis of the report was a whitewash. Uh, well, it, it, certainly nobody nobody really dug into the real detail. And that's the real, that's what I'm talking about, you know. And but I, what I, we I, did is we raised questions right from the start two years ago, and not one of the issues we raised, including data collection and commercial airliners with radiation detectors, Wi-Fi connected to the ground, following the plume patterns of the aircraft and their flight paths to determine a three-dimensional, four-dimensional model of the radioactive plumes, nothing that we suggested, not a damn thing from re from redundancy in power systems to a corium catcher to a seawall, nothing, not a damn thing has been done, except they've tightened up this journalism now, so basically it's a dead zone in terms of asking well, questions. Well, uh, uh, Dr. Bill, we don't know. They may have followed uh, your suggestion, but uh, not publicly, and the information from any no, uh, data acquisition I don't see any evidence would not be what released. I see is what I see is absolutely no evidence of that. Uh, you can actually go to Google Earth and all the people that have told me that they're basically all I can see is a shell around several of the reactors. The cooling pools are still wide open. There's still subsidence. They're still concerned over building number four, cooling pool falling over. Uh, have you seen any evidence that they actually fix the subsidence problems or these shells that are actually going to do anything real other than change the cosmetic appearance of the reactors? In fact, if these things start to boil off all their water and get hot and start going into a pyrophoric fire, they have to pull the shell off to spray down water to try to turn it off. And by the way, you can't spray water on zirc zirconite cladding because it literally hydrolyzes the water, creates more oxygen, and actually speeds up the fire. So they're basically, once this fire gets started, there's nothing chemically or radioactively you can do to stop the damn thing. That's what's bad. Well, let me just say I'm as concerned today as I was two years ago. So right. You know, well, what they should be doing, and I'm going to re mention it again, just a few high points here. They should be putting a boronated crystalline solution to crystallize the entire thing, form a giant sarcophagus, use tents over it with spider silk Kevlar, convert the radioactive airborne waste into solid waste, move the radioisotopes and the, and the cladding and other material to other sites by double-hauled ships to the bottom of tin mines and other parts of the world. They need to move all these reactors off there and convert them to natural gas. By the way, there was a company in western United States who was willing to sell all the natural gas from the, the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota to the Japanese, which would replace all of their nuclear reactors to convert them to natural gas. And Obama Dr. and his Bill, government there's something they have it. to do before they do any of that. They have to have, one, a sense of morality so they care. <laughs> yeah, and right. They, and they don't put money oh. above all the lies. It's not, to the you know, it's, it's not, it's, by the way, it's not just money. And two, they yeah. have to have a brain. Well, first it's not money. Brain. It's not money in a brain. Here, the real issue is we have monumental satanic evil, hell bent on destroying the planet and killing most of the population. Yeah. It's not just what we have to do is grasp the fact we're not just dealing with greedy people. We're not just dealing with stupid people. We're dealing with satanically galactic level evil. Very people. good article out there on Video Rebels blog. Uh, the the bankers want us all dead. Yeah, and they do. They are marching around with their golden goat heads, singing the uh, the uh, Our Father in Latin backwards with a black mass and calling on the powers of darkness to destroy most of humanity as a sacrifice to their satanic god. The same Gee, god, by the way. how smart is that? Yeah. And when people say, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating, I said, if you don't want to believe this, after you've investigated, turn the only the thing radio, that makes sense. The only thing that walk, fits. walk away and realize you're not going to have a good death. <laughs> You have to be aware spiritually, intellectually, and face the truth, and then do something about it.